the obsessiveness probably comes in the form of the self-loathing and the getting stuck and reaching habitually for negative thoughts rather than positive ones. What do you do? How do you interrupt that now? Say something happens to you, you feel that negativity or fear or whatever it is. What is your how? What techniques do you use to intervene in your thinking? It depends how good I'm feeling. Like on a bad day, I'm obviously like eating biscuits out of the cupboard and I'm trying to make it go away. Maybe shout at someone. Yeah, probably Jesse. Give Jesse a yeah, good going Jessie's over. Jesse's probably pissed me off because the recycling's not been done. It's something very banal. And <laughs> but on a good day, if I'm feeling balanced and good, and something throws me, then. My go-to thing is talk to someone else instantly. I'm not normally strong enough to just deal with it. Why should you myself. be? Yeah, I guess that's the beauty of being a human, isn't it? Like we can bounce off each other and we can have ideas and, and we can listen. So important. So I will text a great friend. It might be your Laura. It might be my friend Claire. Um, I see a therapist. It could be a therapist. Um, yeah. And I will say this this is what's happened. This is what I'm feeling like. You know, usually like, is that normal? I always think that I'm a freak or I'm thinking in an absurd way and get to a point where hopefully I can really rationalise what's going on. And then, and then if I'm feeling good about that, basic things like, you know, I like going walking and being outside. I like running. I like doing exercise. Um, or it might be just trying to replace a shitty thought with a nice one. So, you know, whether you call them mantras, you know, yeah. affirmations, whatever, yeah. just telling myself it's usually, you know, I am enough or, you know, I am okay or whatever, because I, my default setting is that I'm not. Yeah. So I have to do basic building blocks of you're all right. It hasn't got to get any more exciting than that. Just you're all right. And then we just continue the day and hope for the best. And sometimes I have to just sit it out and not be stuck anymore. And that might be after. Usually it's quicker these days, two, three days. And then, oh, I feel all right today. Let's crack on. But then I have to watch that I don't go into a crazy high, which is, oh, I'm feeling amazing. And I'm going to be sprinkling in the whole house and... I'm going to be, you know, playing with the kids in the garden for two hours and I'm going to go and do some emails and I try and do way too much and then knack myself out and I end up back where I was. So it's a balancing act, I think, of uh, looking at your own barometer and working out where you should sit. Sometimes I feel a real big high and what I do is I think, my God, I'm invincible. <laughs> I can do anything. And I set up loads of meetings and that. Oh, yeah. And then people start to go, yeah, all right, we'll have them. And I don't, I don't want them. these meetings. Well, you want them. I can't go up there. They'll judge me. <laughs> oh. yeah. I'm not sitting in there with them asking me what I've been doing lately. And then me going, I don't know, put the bins out yeah. this morning. I think it's keeping it simple, isn't it? That's what my new mantra has been over the last few years is... Keep things simple. I didn't want simple before. I wanted complicated, yeah, I exciting. All I wanted mm. was a roller coaster. Thanks for watching this podcast and going all the way to the end of it. It was usually kind of to click the bell. It might not be there, it could be over there. And uh, subscribing so that we can infiltrate your serenity and peace of mind with jangling bells and buzzes. Thank you. <laughs>